Thought groups. Many non-native English speakers fail to use thought groups when they speak English. For many people, this causes their speech to sound too fast for American listeners to understand. And Americans cannot hear key stress words which convey the meaning. For example, nobody would read a sentence in the following way. I prefer to wait until the last minute to turn my paper in so that I can have the maximum amount of time to make corrections to the content and to find any grammatical errors. When Americans speak, they divide longer sentences into phrases called thought groups. Within each thought group, the content words are emphasized, giving special stress to the focus word. After the focus word, there is a brief pause before the next thought group begins. For example, the above sentence should be read as, I prefer to wait until the last minute to turn my paper in so that I can have the maximum amount of time to make corrections to the content and to find any grammatical errors. There are no solid rules for dividing longer sentences into thought groups. It really depends on the idea that you are trying to convey and your breathing patterns. In this lesson, we have collected some useful guidelines. Number one, the punctuation tells us where to pause, i.e. commas, periods, semicolons, colons, parentheses. In the example below, a slash equals a pause. A double slash means you should pause longer than a single slash. When I was a boy, I liked fishing. Now I am a young man, I like traveling. Number two. Grammar units also help us to form thought groups. Noun phrases. Article plus adjective plus noun. A beautiful woman and her little dog entered the meeting room. Verb phrase. Verb plus adverb. Ran quickly. Verb plus object. Drink the beer. Auxiliary verbs plus main verb. Had been cooked. Prepositional phrase. With my family. In the following paragraph, you will see how the thought groups are formed when speaking. Cultural differences. In your country, is it considered polite to listen quietly to other people without any change of expression on the face? If this is the style you have learned, perhaps you should watch two North Americans talking. Notice how the person who is listening will have frequent changes of expression. The listener may also make short remarks while the other person is talking. These may be one word, like really, or they may just be a sound, like uh-huh or mmm. This is how North American listeners show that they are listening in a friendly way. That is why North American listeners get uneasy when a listener is completely silent and shows no change of expression. In the American style of conversation, an unmoving face means that the listener is unfriendly or perhaps even angry. In this exercise, you will listen to a short speech of President Barack Obama. Try to identify the short pauses between thought groups within a sentence and the longer pauses between sentences that he made during his talk. Tonight, I'd like to update the American people on the international effort that we have led in Libya, what we've done, what we plan to do, and why this matters to us. I want to begin by paying tribute to our men and women in uniform, who once again have acted with courage, professionalism, and patriotism. They have moved with incredible speed and strength 
Because of them and our dedicated diplomats, a coalition has been forged and countless lives have been saved. Meanwhile, as we speak, our troops are supporting our ally Japan, leaving Iraq to its people, stopping the Taliban's momentum in Afghanistan, and going after al-Qaeda all across the globe. As Commander-in-Chief, I am grateful to our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and to their families. And I know all Americans share in that sentiment. For generations, the United States of America has played a unique role as an anchor of global security and as an advocate for human freedom. Mindful of the risks and costs of military action, we are naturally reluctant to use force to solve the world's many challenges. But when our interests and values are at stake, we have a responsibility to act. That's what's happened in Libya over the course of these last six weeks. Libya sits directly between Tunisia and Egypt, two nations that inspired the world when their people rose up to take control of their own destiny. For more than four decades, the Libyan people have been ruled by a tyrant, Muammar Gaddafi. He has denied his people freedom, exploited their wealth, murdered opponents at home and abroad, and terrorized innocent people around the world, including Americans who were killed by Libyan agents. Last month, Gaddafi's grip of fear appeared to give way to the promise of freedom. In cities and towns across the country, Libyans took to the streets to claim their basic human rights. As one Libyan said, for the first time, we finally have hope that our nightmare of 40 years will soon be over. 